Hello and welcome to this revision podcast on society from 1990 to 2007. First of all, population trends. There was a huge scale of change and quite a rapid one between 1990 and 2007 and it had a massive effect on Britain. Immigration had risen to the top of the agenda. For example, 30% of people were actually bothered about it in 2007 compared to 3% of those who were asked in 2001. Some people believe that Britain was getting full up and that we were losing our way of life. And they all thought this could lead to rising tensions between ethnic minorities and the white majority. There's also more people in the country because people were living longer. Um, this is due to better healthcare and a rise in living standards. And it led to 10 million people out of the uh, 60 odd million people being over the age of 65, which has been termed the demographic time bomb. It's called that because the amount of money that they had paid throughout their life into national insurance has not been sufficient to cover all their pensions and welfare needs. And this must now be paid by the current working generation, and they have to pay extra. This greying of Britain was due to the baby boom after the war and it has meant that more people are retiring now uh, than ever before and it causes pressure on the NHS and nursing homes for example as well as pension provision like I said before. Some of them have actually got quite a lot of money and disposable income and um, companies have tried to harness that and focus adverts specifically for the pensioners. Other pensioners have really struggled to cope with even their heating bills. There are those who say that the pensioners have got too much power because not only do the companies want to focus on them, but politicians need to get their vote. And they may have too much power for people who don't contribute to the actual country by earning any money. Lynn has said that there are calls not overly serious ones, um, to take away the vote for over 65s. But I doubt that will ever happen. Elsewhere, out-of-town shopping centres were built, and the hollowing out of the cities grew even more so. There are there have been more single occupants in houses than ever before. And this has led to housing being stretched. Also in London, um, it's been growing quite rapidly compared to this country. And that meant houses have been stretched and services in London are being stretched as well. In the north, it's quite the opposite. Uh, They're obviously a lot less well off. And that's caused urban decay and low house prices. There has been some success in northern cities like Glasgow and Leeds, for example, uh, because of funding from government. But there was a centre-right think tank that, uh, called Policy Exchange, came up with a report that said, those towns in the north are beyond hope that they'll go and live in better off places like London. Even David Cameron said that was balmy. In the countryside, uh, that had been emptying since 1945 at the start of this course. And at that point, half the country had lived in rural or semi rural areas, and now only three people of people work in the countryside. This had obviously been going on for a long time, but the impact has been felt in the 1990s. Farmers, for example, with their small pieces of land, small business farmers, have gone bankrupt uh, due to the intensive farming measures. And many have set aside land due to e poverty. The BSE crisis and foot and mouth disease also cause distress to the farmers and people in the countryside. And when Blair and New Labour and fox hunting, it led to rural people, for example, the Countryside Alliance, claiming he did not care and he was too urbanite. They argued that Blair was fighting a class war but in a and 400,000 marched against hunting ban organised by um, a Countryside Alliance and that's about half the number that protested against the Iraq war. Now Blair has had the biggest protests out of any Prime Minister against his decisions in both Iraq and the fox hunting and both sets of protests have been in vain. Let's have a look at immigration and multiculturalism. Globalisation has increased the speed of immigration. EU expansion also increasing amount of numbers coming in. 
and we've had asylum seekers from war-torn areas like Somalia, Afghanistan and Iraq. This has led to some so-called bogus asylum seekers, which has caused bitterness from some sections of society. Illegal immigrants have come over here, and there was actually a camp near to Calais in France called Sangat, where they stayed until they could find someone to take them over. And they did this because they thought the benefits were better than other European countries, and they often risked their lives and savings to come over. There are guest workers from Eastern Europe, uh, the A8 countries, often been, but they often went back home after they worked here for a couple of years. They still called it immigrants by the press and lumped with all the other people coming into the country. People have been worried that immigrants lead to higher crime rates and also that they lead to British people losing jobs in favour of immigrants. Migration Watch was a push group set up that argued that they led also to the overstretching of public services. Now on the other hand, economists have argued that they did help the economy. They either do really low paid jobs that nobody else wants to do, or they come and do highly skilled jobs like being doctors. But even Blair now has admitted that too many came in. Um, we didn't have to let them in straight away. I mean, France, for example, tried to stop them and delay them from coming in. And I suppose if they stay, eventually they will not accept they get paid lower than everybody else and they'll gradually want higher wages. So the e economic benefit is only short term. Again, others would argue that these immigrants are mostly young and fit, so they don't need the welfare services as much. Overall, it's been difficult to work out the numbers actually coming in, and so many of people are coming in and leaving, and it's difficult to detect the uh, amount of immigration and emigration. And it means it's difficult to predict trends over time. And immigrants are still being concentrated in some urban areas, so it affects more people than um, affect some people more than others. As well, you've got people, British, white British people leaving the country, and it's estimated that 5.5 million people, which is 10% really, roughly, of Britain, actually live in abroad permanently, and worryingly, that tends to be graduates. Another estimate is that one in six graduate emigrates abroad to work and live.